All right, welcome everyone. This is a version of a class that I recently did for EXP World, EXP University. I'm a mega icon, I'm an icon instructor for EXP. Um, and so I wanted to share it with you today. Let me just get to my, you know, lots of technology. Um, my reason for putting this together is because a lot of times I, you know, my thing is helping new people and others that are in the business grow their careers. Um, I work with some top producers as well, but I'm better, I think, at um, helping people get their business going, whether they're new or used agents, right, getting their business going. And there's a general feeling that the way you get your business going if you're in real estate is cold calling. And that what you're taught if you, you know, search the internet, watch YouTube videos, and perhaps taught by whatever organization or broker that you currently work for is that you ought to be door knocking, you ought to call for sale by owners, you ought to call expired listings, and you ought to do circle prospecting, things like that. Now, that was the same thing that they were, we were teaching real estate agents back in the 1980s, right? Don't ask, how do you know what they were teaching back in the 1980s? Trust me, I know what they were teaching back in the 1980s, and it's no different. And although just because something is old, it doesn't necessarily mean it's not useful. I would be the last to, to argue that. But what I'm saying is, is that society and technology may have changed. And I never was a cold caller. I never was a door knocker. And I'm telling you, there may be other ways of doing it, which is what we were going to talk about today. Um, that's just a little bio slide. This is some of the things that we're going to talk about. For those of you who, who don't know me, the bio slide says I'm in Northern California. I have a mega icon team with EXP. Last 12 months, we did over 40 million in volume. Um, and I've uh, helped a lot of agents launch their real estate careers. So these are some of the topics we're gonna cover. We're gonna cover something called the agent archetypes. And after a discussion of that, we're gonna go into a plan, a high level plan, for becoming a great work net, great networker um, within perhaps as little as 90 days. Trigger events, plan of action, some scripts, a follow-up plan, all of that is here for the taking. So it's all about leads, isn't it? Most common question I get, are you gonna give me leads? Right, I'm gonna pick this team, I'm gonna pick this office because they say they're going to give me leads. And boy, I really want leads, I gotta get going, somebody give me leads. Well. Not all leads are created equal, and sometimes you find out that the promise of leads uh, it doesn't really work out. And what this diagram shows, which looks sort of like a you know abstract centipede or something like that, is that there's a difference between the quality and the quantity. So, for example, referrals. The qual the what I mean by quality is that the conversion rate on a good referral is over 90%. If somebody is, if you're referred a buyer and you don't screw up and they really do want to buy a house, the chances that they're not going to work with you is very, very slim if it was a referral. Organic, which is search engine optimizations, you're an uh, expert on something and people found you and they're interested in multifamily and you seem to be an expert. A conversion of those, lead, those leads are pretty high because they see you as an expert. Portal, Z, real, <laughs> did I almost said Zillator and Rillo, but anyhow, Zillow and Realtor.com, among others, kind of in the middle there. Uh, AdWords, which is the different pay-per-clicks, Google social media pay-per-clicks, it kind of depends. And at the bottom of the list are lists, <laughs> um, things like expired lists, for sale by owner lists, um, foreclosure lists, all of those companies that you can sign up for where, you know, they, you know, Red X, Land Voice, Expresso, Vulcan, there's a whole bunch of them. By the way, a version of this is when you have a team that has sort of like a round robin where, where leads come in, they're assigned to different people. The conversion rate on those leads is very, very low. 
Um, for those of you that are asking, the slides are contained in the handout section, which is over on the right in the GoToWebinar panel. And yes, this will be recorded and the recording would be available on my YouTube channel in a couple of days, or if you send me $5 right away, right away. So conversion down at the bottom, like the round robin internet leads that come in, conversion on those is less than 1%. If you do internet lead generation yourself, you can expect between a 1% to 3% conversion rate. How do you get the three? You follow up with the leads over time. So we have on one end of the scale, a higher than 90% conversion rate, and at the other end of the scale, well, less than, less than 1%. Um, let me see. How come I didn't expect that? All right. That's fine. So you probably, maybe, maybe not, have heard of something called the DISC profile. Tony Robbins has a free assessment. And what the DISC profile does is it essentially looks at personalities in the four quadrants. Uh, above the line, the horizontal line, you have the dominant, the D, and the I. The people that are in that test high in those areas are the kind of real estate agents that want to go get the business themselves. They don't want to wait for it. They want to go get it. The difference between the D and the I all has to do with face-to-face. -face. The D doesn't really care, right? The I wants face-to-face. -face. So the high D is somebody that might be more suited to cold calling because they're not relationship-oriented and it's all about results. The I would rather door knock than cold call if given a choice, because at least door knocking you're face to face with somebody. But networking events is where they shine because to somebody who's a high I, telling them that your job is to go to a networking event and be friendly with people, that's not much of a that's not much of work, right? Because it's the kind of thing they would like to do anyhow. Now the ones below the line are people that would, agents that would rather the business come to them. The S's, the steady ones, are more interested in it being face-to-face. -face. They want the business to come to them, but they would like it to be face-to-face. -face. Open houses. Any kind of an event where you get to set up a booth and talk to people, right? People come up, hey, what's the booth about? Oh, yeah, and they're very good, very friendly at that. Now the C is somebody that would like the business to, to come to them. They don't really want it to be face to face. They're the more analytical style, internet lead generation. So they would be more comfortable at three o'clock in the morning doing something on their laptop than uh, going to a networking event, right? Now, by the time I've gone through these four, there's probably one of these styles that resonates with you more than the other. And where I'm going with this is that what most real estate teams do, what most real estate brokers do, what most real estate company trainers do, is it's a one size fits all for sale by owners, expired listing, um, circle prospecting, door knocking, go get them, right? And what I'm saying is that that's not a system that works well for many of the personality styles. And what I believe is, is that those things that we do easiest are the things that we usually do best. And so maybe we might want to develop a system for generating business that is consistent with our own style. Now, this, just as an old line, the D will take you to war. The I will want to know what color the uniforms are going to be. The S is going to want to know how to take care of the wounded and the C they're working on the battle plan, right? All of which, of course, could be useful, but sometimes these, who know? Now, that idea is related to what's called the four agent archetypes. The prospector, the converter, the networker, and the marketer. And you'll notice that, again, we've got four quadrants. They kind of sort of match, right, you know? And there's a difference between direct and indirect and warm and cold. So um, what we mean by, I, I, and let's start with warm and cold. 
real estate agents tend to lean warm or cold, one way or the other. Now, you might be thinking, well, doesn't everybody want warm leads? No, no, not everybody wants warm leads. What I mean is I know agents who the la I, I hired somebody recently, and what she said is, I just want to know, I, I don't have to call all my friends and family and try to get real estate business from them. I just want to know that I don't have to do that. And my answer is you don't have to do that. Right. There are ways, there are some people that would rather work with strangers than work with their sphere of influence. They would rather it be cold and not warm. Other people are, oh, give me the warm leads, give me people I already know. I'm going to talk to the people I know because I already know them. Now, the difference between direct and indirect is that is, are you going to get them or are they coming to you? And the you need to sort of think about the, the relationships. Now, the networker, which is what we're gonna be talking about today, the networker, well, you have to be good at networking. You have to be good at relationship building. You would be in community involvement and leadership. You would stay in touch with your network. You need a basic customer relationship management system. I made a video on how you can use Google for with some add-ons and it would serve as a basic CRM. You don't need, if you're at eXp KV Core, you don't need Keller Williams Command, you don't need the software that, you don't need that stuff. Most agents don't use it, right? Because only some of the systems require that sophisticated of a, mark, of a, of a customer relationship system. But you need a marketing and touch system, you need a business card or basic website. You don't need a lead generating website. You don't need all the whistles and bells. You know, you just need something really basic in case somebody, so you put it on your business card. Um, social media presence is sometimes a growth area. I know people that are very, agents that are very good at networking, but they're really not doing anything on social media. But it allows you to reconnect with the people that you're networking. And you need time and you need friends. You don't need a super awesome website. You don't need lead generation sites. You don't need expensive lead programs. You don't need complex technology. If you've got, if you read your email in AOL and you can only use four or five functions on your phone, you do not want to tackle a complicated um, customer relationship management. You don't want to, you don't, and you don't need to. Right, I have agents that, by the way, they have an AOL email and they seem to struggle with logging into websites that still sell a lot of real estate because they're good talkers, good networkers, and they are friendly and they follow up with people. The prospector, you need to have good habits. You need to set aside time to call. You need skills. You need to practice scripts. You need to be able to set appointments. You need organization because the fortune is in the follow-up. And 70% of real estate business is not done with first contact, but it's done with follow-up. You need um, uh, a data system. You need to get the expired listings, the for sale by owners, the list. You need a customer relationship management system. You probably need a direct mail system. You need a conversion-oriented website. That means a website that gets people's contact information out of them when they go visit it. You're gonna need testimonials and reviews and proof of results. Notice that wasn't there for the networker because with the networker, we've already are, we're getting, we're going for a referral, right? But if you're the prospector, they don't necessarily know you from anyone else. So they might be looking to see, do you have, you know, any reviews on Zillow? You might need not just a regular phone, but a dialer, right? Um, oftentimes it's used, the Mojo dialer, there's, so there's a whole bunch of them. Um, you don't need a big fancy website if you're a telemarketer, right? You don't need to, right? Because you're spending all your time calling people and putting them in the database so it'll follow up. You don't need a social media presence. You're not meeting people on social media, you're just calling people. Um, you don't need a sophisticated online strategy. You got a list, you know, you get a list from the title company, you skip trace the list, 
you put on your headset, fire up the mojo dialer, and you have at it, right? Hopefully scrubbing it first. The converter is somebody who's spending money on internet advertising and leads are coming in. You need, if you're advertising things on the internet like property, you need to respond within five to 10 minutes of somebody inquiring. If you don't, if somebody's interested in information about a property and you don't get back to them in five or 10 minutes, many of them will go on to somebody else and essentially it'll double your cost per lead, right? Because you're losing all of your, because you'll double it, right? Because you're losing all of these appointments. You need phone skills because you're going to have to talk to people to get them from, to go from an internet lead into an appointment. You need organization. And it would be good to measure the quality of and cost per lead. You need a budget. Let me give you an example. Supposing you said to me, I, and by the way, the, the converter thing, the internet lead generation can start right away. I did a class a uh, few weeks ago on down payment assistance programs. And during the class, I actually ran an ad on Facebook. I had somebody fill out the form that day, that day. Right, so this can produce leads right away. But let's say you said, this is what I want to do. This is where I want to get my money. I would say, how much money do you have to invest each month in a budget for internet lead generation? Let's say you say $500 a month, right? Why not? Well, what are the costs per lead in our area, right? In your area may not be my area, but in my area, depending upon where you're advertising, it could be $50 to $100 per lead. And that's because in Santa Clara County, where I am, the average price of a home in September is over $1.9 million. I'm not, I'm not kidding, right? Over $1.9 million. And so to buy advertising that gets to those leads is very expensive. In other areas, it costs maybe $20 to $25 a lead. Let's say it costs $50 for you to get a lead. Now, if you're spending $500 a month, that's gonna produce 10 leads a month. Sound good. What is the conversion rate on that kind of lead? And the answer is when you're starting out about 1%. 1%. Now, following up over time, some of the people might convert later, but if you're getting a 1%, so you're going to need 100 of those leads, 100 of those leads, before you're likely to close a transaction. And that would cost you $5,000 and would take 10 months. Hmm? Now. In a $1.9 million market, $5,000 isn't a lot, right? Not really a lot, right? I'm just saying. But if your cost per lead's a little bit less, of course, you need to have advertising programs to get people to call you. You need a lead generation website. If, one, of the compl one of the reasons I'm doing this is sometimes new agents, EXP has a program called KV Core. We don't own it. You could buy it if you have a real estate license and a credit card, but it's very expensive. It's a super high end lead generating customer relationship management system. And because of it, it is, there's a big learning curve. And so a lot of times people look at this thing and they say, this is just too much. I can't figure out how, I mean, you know, you can pay people hundreds of dollars to help you and you can take courses because it'll do everything. Right now, if you're not in this archetype, you don't need that level of a CRM. You really don't. But if you are, if this is your thing, you need websites that like landing pages, squeeze pages, you need the kind of things that KV Core can produce. And it's got a follow up system and a real commitment to follow up because that'll change your 1% conversion rate to three to perhaps even four, should be better. Now, you don't need a network. You, I have a guy that's relocated from Canada to San Jose, EXP agent, right? He's, guess what he's going to do? He's gonna do this. He's doing this in Canada, right? I'm gonna help him and he's gonna set up a website. You know, you, 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 he, 
he's, he's got KV core already, right? He could turn this on and start pro producing leads in another country in a day, right? Um, that's an advantage. You don't need to have a network. You don't need to serve influence. You, you, you don't need another website. You don't need a lot of content, right? You don't need tons of content. The marketer. The marketer is that agent who's an expert on condominiums, who's great on multifamily homes, who specializes in luxury properties or particular types of properties. In other words, they're an expert and they're able to build an identity or brown brand around this. I know a, an agent and her, her, her line, she calls herself the duplex chick, the duplex chick. And she specializes in, well, you might guess, duplexes, right? So they, are, the, the marketer builds an identity or a brand around that. And that's their messaging. They're, they're posting articles in a blog. They're doing things where if you start searching for that condominium, you know, the, what, what is the difficulty of selling a condominium? What should I worry about? What, what kind of disclosures that I need in, in this particular area? They come up in those searches. Um, they have messaging and they develop and use campaigns. Now they need niche or brand oriented websites. The website that you're given from EXP, Keller Williams, Cogo Banker, Compass, Intero, all of my, I refer to those websites as Swiss army knives of websites. They're the Swiss army knives. Right, there's a buying section, a selling section. Hey, you want to join our office section? Hey, here we have land for sale. Oh, you can download a report. It, it, it's, everything is sort of crammed together. That doesn't work well when you're trying to focus. So the marketer would have a website designed for first time home buyers in Santa Clara County. Right, they would have a website designed for selling your condominium in, in, San, in, in Los Angeles. Right, they have niche websites, neighborhood specific. They need a customer relationship management system with email marketing, which can be done, by the way, with other than the high end everything customer relationship management system. They need content. You need to be an expert. You need to have information about the condo market and the multifamily market and things like that. Lead capture tools, fill out my form and I'll send you the free report on how to build an ADU in your and make money, right? I'll send you a free report. And they're generally social media and because they're putting the stuff out and they're in, in local media. You don't need the generic websites, the Swiss Army knife, right? Because you're marketing to specific niches. Um, you don't need the generic real estate stuff or a huge ad budget budget because you're going for organic results rather than pay per click. Right? In other words, you're getting clients because they Google searched the topic you you have written about. You don't need a huge ad budget because you're doing organic. Um, and you don't need tons of leads. Now, we talked about warm versus cold, right? We talked about direct versus indirect. This is sort of a summary of it, which next time I'll remove those next two slides. But that gives us a little bit of a, something to think about. Now, one of the reasons why I don't teach agents that I work with for sale by owners, expired listing, circle prospecting, cold call, I don't, I don't do that. If you want to do that, there's thousands of YouTube videos on how to do this, but most people, this has been my experience, do not want to be interrupted by a phone call. And not everybody, by everybody, I mean real estate agents, are made for cold calling. Building relationships might be a better way. One study showed that 2% of cold calls resulted in an appointment and cold calling was more expensive than getting inbound marketing. And only 2% of consumers said they wanted to be contacted by a telephone and 80% of decision makers said that they won't buy from people that call them on the phone. Um, I've also noticed, by the way, um, my phone, I have an Android phone, has a Google Assistant feature that allows me to tap a button and it'll screen my calls for me. Google will ask 
who are you? Why are you calling? You're being screened. And if it's not something that I recognize, you know, it's easy to screen out the telemarketers. How do you feel when you get unsolicited phone calls? Are you happy? Spend some time chatting, making a new friend. When people are calling you to say they want to extend your car warranty, you know, that sort of thing. You're glad to hear from them. You think this is an effective thing. 70% of people say they would rather have a text or email over a phone call. The average American gets a lot of texts and a lot of phone calls. And about at least a third to a half of the people are introverted. In Silicon Valley, it might be a bit higher. Might be a bit higher. And uh, they don't want interruptions and don't really like talking to people on the phone. How many of you would rather have a text message or an email than a phone call? I'm raising my hand even though you can't actually see me. Um, and yes, not everybody, we don't even answer. Um, also, if you happen to call people that are on the do not call list, don't fuss. The fine is only $43,792. That's all. And by the way, the state of California has their own do not call rules. And depending upon a variety of factors, they could fine you up to another 25 grand. And yes, I know you buy, you know, a service that scrubs, but they're not perfect usually, right? And this also gives you an idea of people's attitudes about it. So this is the 2021 profile of home buyers and sellers. We don't have the 22 one out. And how do buyers find their agents? That's the question. 47%, 47% said they were referred by or is a friend, neighbor, or relative. 13% of the people that bought their home and worked with the agent before, 7% um, both for a property online and a website, internet lead generation, they saw the for sale sign. By the way, one way to get business is to have business, right? Putting up your open house signs in a neighborhood, referred by someone else, another real estate agent, 5%, visited an open house, 4%, relocation, 2%, social media, social media. How many of you, I see real estate agents that do this, they sign up for some system that just dumps stuff into their Facebook feed, right? You know, real estate stuff, right? That's, you know, how many, we're not talking here about social media pay-per-click. We're talking about you using social social media to connect with people, 1%. So if you're posting real estate stuff on social media and nobody's liking it, sharing it, or commenting it, you're not doing yourself any favors. So notice cold calling and door knocking doesn't appear, but you're thinking, of course it doesn't, Mike, that's dumb. We don't do door knocking and cold calling for buyers. No, 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 no. We do it for sellers. Okay. Sellers. How did the sellers find their real estate agent? 39% referred or is a friend, neighbor, or relative. 29% used the agent before. Adding those two together and rounding up a teensy bit, about 70%, 70% of the sellers found their agent through referral or repeat business, 70%. Personal contact by agent, there we go, 4%. By the way, that includes email and the et cetera, by the way, includes farming, includes postcards, all of that, 4%. So if your plan to get listings is to cold call door knock, you're not aiming at 96% of the business. 4% referral, internet website three, open house two, really 2% 2 of the sellers met the agent at an open house, right? Um, that's less expensive than farming. <laughs> Referred by a relocation company, here we are, social media again, 1%. 1%. Don't post boring real estate stuff that people do not like share and comment. Don't, don't do it. All right. Um, and spending a lot of money um, or time, just you, you can see the numbers. You can see the numbers. So how to become a great networker. 
if you've never heard the line before, let me be the first. Real estate is a contact sport. And by the way, at the, those are all actual real estate agents. And at the bottom of the pile is a for sale by owner and that they, you know, they're anyhow. So it's, I think that's true. So what would be the goal, a goal, a potential goal of a referral based real estate business? First of all, I want you to know that if you're doing these other things, not the marketer so much, but certainly the prospector, not if you're doing, if you stop cold calling and door knocking, your business stops. Your business stops. But if you've got a great network, this is a, like an annuity. It's like getting an annual income. Right? You're saying it keeps on giving. It's not a one-time thing. If you door knock, you might meet one person that could buy or sell or invest in real estate. But if you have the right connections, they could be good for two sales a year. Would it be possible for you to meet 10 partners that could assist you in having two sales a year? That would be 20 transactions and maybe another 30 if we're really working hard at this that could produce one sale a year. And that's from 30, 40, 40 total contacts, but the right 40. So 90 days to networking greatness. Let's say you're ready to go. I, you know, I've got religion now. I believe that I'm going to be a networker. I'm throwing down my, you know, my mojo dialer, you know, anyhow. So you're going to want your, your network is going to determine your net worth. And net worth is something we usually think about equity and what, what your assets are. Your assets in real estate is your net worth. And one of the questions when you're picking partners is, are they a service match? And what that means is, there, is their quality service as equal or greater than yours? Because if you refer the wrong people, then it backfires. Are they relationship-based? For example, insurance agents, there are some that are very friendly and they actually network and they talk to their, their clients. Others, all they do is send an email in, before renewal is, 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 is time, is done. They just send an email. So the question, if I were looking for an insurance agent, I would be asking them, well, how do you keep in contact with your current you know, database, what do you do? What kinds of things? And I'm listening for somebody who is relationship based and do they have a growth mindset? So one of the scripts that I, that I use and I teach agents to use is, let's say I were to call a landscaper up and I said, hi, my name is Mike, I'm a real estate agent and I'm putting together a preferred vendor list for my you know, uh, client database and I happen to need a good landscaper. And it looks like from your reviews, you're doing really, you know, you're killing it in landscaping. Are you taking on new clients at this time? I've had people say, no, no, I'm not. I, I had a guy quit, I got a lot of business, no. So that's not the right person. And by the way, CPAs, I have a CPA. I asked him, do you want to grow your business? He said, no, no, not really. I got all I can handle, right? So you wanna find somebody that's also hungry, right? That wants to grow the business. Are you referable? Are, are you punctual? Do you show up on time? Do you do what you say, trustworthy? Are you reliable? Are you polite? Do you say please and thank you? Do you send like handwritten notes to people? Oh, it was really great talking to you today. We get extra credit for that because you don't see it as often as you used to. Are you knowledgeable? Do you know what you're doing? You know, are, are, is there something that you're good at? Now, for some of you that are brand new, you might be thinking, I need to get good at something. Right? And by the way, knowing the market, knowing what's going on in your area, which is easy to do, would be something you might want to be good at. So one of the, this came from, some of this comes from um, my business partner, some of it 
from material that I've used. Somebody that I had worked with, let's say elsewhere at another real estate company, she was bummed out because she wanted to join a big networking group like BNI or Lee Tip. Those are networking groups and none of them were allowing real estate agents in because they had a waiting list for real estate agents. So the idea is how hard is it to set up something like that? I mean, you know, the late tip group would have once a month, they would meet at Denny's and have breakfast and talk to each other. How hard is that? The BNI group would meet sometimes for, a, you know, happy hour. And so what she did is she went and recruited her own group. I didn't have to pay BNI or late tip any money. Right? She just went, now that requires more work, right? It's that four letter word. And so, at, so let's say, the, and this is a 90-day thing, in the first month, you, you, once a month, you might do a Zoom thing where you have a guest speaker. The guest speaker would be one of the partners. And maybe once a quarter, or it, it can vary a lot, is once a month, once a quarter, we would have a meeting oftentimes hosted by one of the partners. And sometimes these are people that have office space. Sometimes there's lenders you can use. There's lots of different ways. You, um, uh, there are quite a few vendors in your area that would be happy to host something with you like this. I'm just saying. And then every 90 days, hopefully, right? the goal would be for the you and your group of partners to attend local events where I would be introducing people to Jody Lee from Golden One Credit Union. She would introduce people to me, right? I would be introducing people to the financial planner. They'd be introduced. You get the idea. Now, other things you could do to integrate into the business, you could join the local Toastmasters groups. These are people that are generally trying to improve themselves. Or might wouldn't hurt you to you know maybe become a better public speaker. Certainly wouldn't hurt me. I, I need to I need to work on it. Joining the local chamber. I know what some of you are saying. You're old. That's why you're saying this. This is so old school. Yeah, it's still got potential. Plus, there's people that are there that have been going for 20, 30 years. Think of what their network is like. Um, if you have a hobby, if you're um, like one of the agents that I coached, she didn't want to door knock, didn't want a cold call, but she loved dogs. And so she goes to all the different dog parks and things like that. Her first four transactions when I was working, all dog people that she met, right? Join something or a nonprofit that does good works in the community. For many of you, go, let me just say it this way. Everyone you know, everyone you meet is a potential real estate client, everyone, now or sometime in the future. Anything you can do that puts you in regular contact with other human beings could generate real estate business. And particularly for buyers, most people think, Many people think all real estate agents are pretty much the same anyhow. It doesn't really matter. I mean, you're buying a house, not the real estate agent. And so you like dogs and the buyer likes dogs. Sometimes that's all that it takes for them to be your agent. Or you're at a um, volunteering at a food bank and they volunteer at a food bank. You, you, you see where I'm going. Um, rules of engagement, if you deliver, good service and you do everything you promise to do then what you have earned is the lack of a complaint that's what you've earned you might also have earned repeat business because you didn't disappoint them but you probably have not earned a referral so when do you get the referral is when you do more than what's expected. When you under promise, over deliver, and they're like, wow, that was really good. And then they will refer other people to you. Number two, your clients, 
many of you have a database, whether you put it in KV Core or Command or Market Leader or any of those places, whether you've done that, you have a database. It's in your phone, it's in your email. This is my challenge to you. Go through all of the contacts that you have. And this is the question, right? What does this person do for a living? I have their name, I have their email address. Do you know what they do for a living? Have you ever had a conversation with them where you asked them what their perfect customer or client would look like? If I were going to help you in your CPA business, who would be a, the kind of client you would like to meet? Who would that be? And to get our database, our clients, our customers, our contacts, to tell us essentially how we could help them. Oh, by the way, how many homes do you own? Do you own any homes? Are you a buyer? I mean, are you a renter? Do you, are you a homeowner? Do you have investment properties? How many? Do you manage them yourself? Are you looking to expand your portfolio? My biggest complaint about real estate agent databases is, is that they don't contain enough data. Right? They don't have enough data, right? They got the name and the email address and their cell phone number and sometimes not much else. Ask questions to uncover opportunities. I'll go into that in a moment, some specific questions. And you're going to want to create opportunities to connect with people. If you're a networker, right? if you just call people on the phone, you don't have to do this. So let's say you've built a 10 person network and the best way I can encapsulate what the goal for those 12 are. These are not vendors. My, my statement is real estate agents don't need vendors. We, we need business partners. We're not looking for vendors, we're looking for partners. So let's say you've got 12 partners and they each, because they're professionals too, have a 200 person contact base. That's 2,400 people. If people move every 10 years, that's 240 transactions. If you were able to get 10%, it would be 24. If you're saying to me, oh, well, people in my area don't move even every 10 years, it's every 20 years. Okay, so it's not a 10%, it's a 5% turnover rate. That's 12 transactions. 12, that's, yeah, one a month. That's all. Um, assembling your team, you need a good lender. One of the things that I've noticed is, is that loan agents generally have a better professional network than most real estate agents. What I mean by that is they, they know more insurance agents, they know more lawyers, they know more, they just know more people, right? They just do. So one of your main partners needs to be a lender who is also service-oriented relationship banks, right? Professional affiliates, lawyers, CPAs, um, financial planners. So of that group, of the, let's talk with lawyers. Of the, all of the different kinds of lawyers, what kind of lawyer could produce the most leads, generally produces the most leads? It's a sad statement in our society that the answer is divorce lawyers generally produce the most leads. Of the different professionals, who's probably the best at networking already? That's the financial planner. The financial planners are generally already doing a lot of this stuff. They have newsletters, they're, they're doing stuff. Out of the group of professional affiliates, who's got the highest level of trust among their, their clients? And that's probably the CPA. Harder to get a recommendation from a CPA, but boy, that goes a long way if it goes a long way. And home improvement affiliates. Do I have a list coming up? Yeah, I do. Um, so the, we'll talk about them in just a second. So what are the five key asset-based professionals you're gonna want in your network? A loan agent, homeowner's insurance, financial planner, a lawyer, could be bankruptcy, divorce, estate, and a CPA, right? And then you also are going to be looking for home improvement people to network. 
And my suggestion is to focus on listing trigger event professions. For example, there was a remodeling study that was done survey of people that were painting their house. And the question they asked was, why are you painting your house? And 25% of the respondents said they were planning on selling it. That's why they were painting their house, because they're planning on selling it. How many house painters do you know? How many house painters are in your database? When is the last time you had coffee with a house painter? I don't know. Um, tree trimmers, flooring contractors, roofers, remodelers, window washing comes up a lot. Property management. Now, property management's tricky because property managers usually have real estate licenses. However, you can find property management companies that don't list and sell real estate. They do it as a niche so real estate agents will work with them. If you work with a little property manager who would list a house or sell a house, don't you don't, don't want to work with them. Why take a chance? But a property manager that doesn't list or sell real estate that you can refer property management to, they're going to have people that say, well, I want to sell it. I don't want to keep renting it out. Oh, well, I have somebody that could help. Landscapers, those are trigger events, movers. Now, you're going to customer communication frequency. Um, you want to make sure that all of you are communicating with your customer base on a frequent basis. You're going to want to be a real estate resource. In other words, you want to be the hub. This is for your database. If somebody needs a CPA, you want them to ask you. If somebody needs a financial planner, you want them to ask you. If somebody needs a handyman, somebody needs a painter, you want them to ask you. If somebody wants to refinance or talk to a loan agent, you want them to ask you. And all of these people that are in your network, they're going to be your eyes and ears, but not your salesperson. So I would tell them, I'm not, I don't want you to be my salesperson. Don't give the landscaper a stack of your business cards and ask them to hand them out. Don't do that, right? Don't, right? It's not going to work. Also, you've put them in a very uncomfortable position. I'm not asking you to sell me, I'm just asking you to be my eyes and ears. When somebody does something, you wanna show gratitude in a personalized manager. You want to expand your network by meeting professionals and clients at local events, because they'll introduce you to other people. And a network mastermind, some of the things we've done is read books, right, on networking, and then discuss it maybe at the breakfast. I have some, some, some examples. Um, you're going to be judged by the quality of questions you ask, as will your business partners. And we're looking for questions to uncover opportunities. I'll give you an example. The CPA, and this might require a conversation with the CPA. The CPA is going to ask, did you buy or sell any real estate last year when they're doing your taxes? Because they want to know because they're doing your taxes. What you would like them to also ask, next year, this coming year, do you plan on buying or selling anything? Don't just ask what they've done. Maybe you could just ask them, what are your plans in the future to buy or sell real estate? You might uncover something. Home improvement professionals, simply having them ask the question, what prompted this job for you? The house painter is called out there. All they have to do, this is all they have to do, is say, by the way, what prompted this job? Can I ask, why are you getting your house painted? By the way, in a house painting, would the reason they're getting it painted perhaps affect the quality of the debate, the paint, the type of paint? Think would, would that might have something to do with it? It might. But it's a simple question, right? eyes and ears. Um, if you like scorecards and plans and things like that, here's a sample. You can, there's even points you can give yourself. Five asset-based professionals, a CPA, a financial planner, a loan originator, an insurance agent, an attorney or attorneys. You're gonna want, uh, you get 10 points, by the way, if you've already got five. Seven listing trigger vendors, a painter, a landscaper, a roofer, a remodeler, et cetera, you get 10 points. 
per each one, if, you, if you're into this sort of thing, three local businesses that you've got as part of your network, you get points for each one. Do you time block for networking activity? Do you ask questions? Do you ask your sphere if they have a vendor need as a real estate resource? Hey, I look at, I understand that you may not be interested in buying or selling real estate for some time in the future. I just want you to know that if you need anything, like you're interested in doing a kitchen remodel or adding a bathroom or doing something with landscaping or maybe an investment or anything related to real estate, I'm your guy reach out to me, I got great connections. Um, a sample script, right? You can call, you know, hi, my name, you know, when you looked up somebody in Yelp as a landscaper and they've got good reviews and you call them up and you say, hi, my name is Mike, I'm a real estate agent. Putting together preferred vendor lists, you know, I see you've got great reviews. You get the idea, we're looking for somebody that wants to grow their business and somebody that um, doesn't have a networking arrangement with a real estate agent already and somebody with good reviews. So I just have a few scripts, right, in case, you know, you like that. So once you've made a connection with somebody, you might want to put them on a eight-week plan just to get things going, like send them a handwritten note, great talking to you today, look forward to working with you. And then the next week, maybe call them to chat. What would you call them about? Hey, did you get my handwritten note with the Starbucks card? Right? Did you get it? Always ask people what's their coffee religion, you know? Um, do you, the next week, maybe send them um, what's going on in the real estate market, some item of value that you could find? Um, that you might be able to get from home warranty companies, title companies, something that you're, you, you ought to be doing something every month of a newsletter variety. Next week, phone call, another item of value, which might be a holiday thing, phone call, another item of value, which might be the newsletter again, phone call. And then after that, you're going to be following up on social media, make a list so that you're looking at their stuff, right? You're going to email them maybe twice a month, call them at least every quarter. Now, some people you'll be meeting with more often and when they have a birthday, and most people have a birthday, right? Most people do, that you would acknowledge it some way depending upon the kind of referrals you might get. That, I believe, brings us to a shocking end. Um, here, let me... Uh, to, 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 could you provide some ideas on how to reconnect with my college professors and staff? I used to have a good relationship with them during the time I was at college. That's a very good question. Um, very good question. So you call them up and you say, this is, my, this is my suggestion. You call them up and you say, hey, I'm just calling to apologize. Just want to say I'm sorry. And they're like, really? What are you sorry for? Well, you know, um, it's been so many years since we talked and I've thought about it several times and I never gave you a call. And so I just wanted to call and see how, how the heck are you doing? What's going on in your life? Tell me what's happening and um, let them talk, right? And usually people will say, oh, it wasn't your fault. I didn't call you either. And then, you know, that sort of thing. Um, start with relationship. Don't just call them and say, hi, I'm a real estate agent. I need to make some money. Know anybody that wants to buy, sell, or invest? All right, no, okay. Well, you ever hear anybody, you, you'll remember, I'm a real estate agent, you know, give me a call. I, I, I would, you know, not, not be quite that, that, that um, you know, obvious. Uh, thank you, Helma, I'm glad you enjoyed the class. Do you know the link for Tony's free disc assessment? No, however, I know a website that does know how you get Tony Robbins free disc assessment, and it's called Google. Oh, Tony Robbins free disc. Maybe he's referring to his uh, disc at TonyRobbins.com disc free personality. Which personality are you? Let's see what happens if I click on it. Ah, oh, there's a button right in the middle. All right, take assessment. It's useful. By the way, if you're on my team, share it with me. 
because it's, um, you know, we sometimes say, treat other people the way we want to be treated. That's not necessarily good advice. We should treat other people the way they want to be treated, which is why it's good to learn about this and be able to identify different personality styles. Anyhow, I think I have close to ran out of time. I hope you found this a useful conversation. If you're interested in, by the way, I coach real estate agents. Did you know that? That I coach real estate agents. And if you were interested in finding out how that works, um, you've got my contact information. Reach out to me. I'd love to talk to you about that. Bye, everyone. Have a good day.